Good afternoon, my fourth hour lovelies. This is my third time attempting this video. Let's keep our fingers crossed that I have it figured out. I hope everyone is washing their hands and not touching their faces, getting their work done, helping out around the house, doing whatever you can to keep yourself busy and finding at least something fun to do or something that you enjoy and that you are staying stress-free. If you need any kind of support, please let myself know or let the school know and we will do whatever we can for that. Maybe it is some lunches. They are distributing lunches every day. Um, it could be some emotional support if you need to get in contact with one of our social workers. Just let us know and we will see what we can do to help. Okay, so last week was just a review on the trig function properties and features that we talked about. And this week is going to be that with one additional thing, and that is a vertical shift. Remember, vertical is up and down. So we're going to be taking those graphs that we've been doing and we're moving them up and down. Specifically, we're going to start moving the midline and then everything else shifts with that. We said that our midline always starts on the x-axis, which it does, but now we're going to move it. So let me pull up my file here. I've been practicing with this. Here we go. So here is our equation. Please notice that this, this guy right there is new. So we'll talk about him in just a moment. Let's get the little red dot out of the way. So we know these three words. These three right here, we've been doing. So we know that the amplitude is that number there that's right in front. So this graph has an amplitude of three, meaning it goes up three and down three from the midline. It has a frequency of two. So that means by the time you get to 360 degrees, it would have made two full turns. And the last one is the period. So we know that we have to take 360 divide it by two, and that gives us 180. There we go, 180. So that means it makes one full turn in 180. So that would be our period. Oops, too far. All right, so now that leaves the midline. So let's change color here on my pen. So our midline is this new guy right here. This guy right here. Oops, do we have to go back and touch that? Here we go, that's our midline. So this tells us that our midline is at four, or what it did is it shifted everything up. So it moved up four units. That pen's not working the best, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, so if we were to graph this, if we were to graph this, so let's leave this right here. Let's, all right, so let's see. Our midline would have started here, but because it is now positive four, it's gonna shift our midline up four. So one, two, three, four. So here is our new midline, right across there, just like that. All right, our amplitude is still at three. So what this means is we're going to go from our midline, we're gonna go up three. One, two, three. That's where my dotted line goes. That's my maximum value. That's the highest I will ever go. Won't go any higher than that. And my, min, my minimum is three below the midline. So when I count three down, I have this there. All right, now my graph is not labeled, but I'm going to say that each one of those is, let's switch to this, each one of these lines is going to be 60. So there's 60, that's 120, that's going through very horribly. That's one, I'm gonna try and write slower, 80, there. So by the time I get to 180, I need to make a full turn. So I would have another one, two, 180 to make two full turns. This right here is my 360. 
It's a sine, so it starts at the midline. So remember, midline starts here and goes up, down, back up to the midline, and it does it again. Up, down, back up to the midline. So that is approximately my sine graph. All right, so let's switch you back over. Okay, where's my video here? I don't know, I lost it somewhere. Okay, so I wanna show you one other thing. Okay, so here is a graph of sine of three sine of two X plus A. Now I left A in here because I don't know what A is yet. And I'm saying that A is going to be zero. So watch what happens when I make A get bigger. It just slides my graph upward goes up, up, and up, and up, and up. And then if I make A smaller, so here's back to zero again, but then if I make A a negative, now it goes downwards. Notice the shape of the graph is not changing. It's just moving the graph up and down. That's all it's doing. Okay, I want you guys to be careful of that and pay attention because it's the only thing different here that's changing. All right, so let me get back to the window that I want. I lost you guys somewhere. You're here somewhere, I don't know where. Okay, so that, that's your lesson. Okay, so remember this right here, the number that's being added or subtracted, that is your midline. This number here is still your frequency. This number is still your amplitude. You are going to have 20 questions for your first assignment this week. It's going to ask you a couple about the midline. It's going to ask you a couple about frequency and period matching. And then it's going to ask you to match your numbers here, your values to their vocabulary words up here. Okay, remember you're going to submit your answers in the Google Doc and then you are going to click the done button, mark as done, once you have that, okay? The PDF attached to it will have your questions on there. If you have a question, please let me know, okay? I want to make sure that you get this as much as you can, and we're going to do some more practice later this week as well, okay? Good luck. Again, if you have any questions, please make sure you let me know. And I hope to see you very, very soon. All right. Bye-bye.